Together, I sat down with Elmira Woods. She's the director of social impact programs at ThoughtWorks, and I asked her about the state of the economy and how it ultimately impacts the entire region. Well, Nigeria has been the shining star, but it's also been a major uh, problematic area, right? So we have to understand that, you know, even though um, Nigeria has had oil exported since 1956, that Nigeria is one of the most unequal societies in the world. And so the gap between those that have and those that don't, tremendous. And, and I think what you have is an economy that's been in steady decline, um, especially with the fall in oil prices, but also with the rising inequality. It is an economy that cannot sustain itself at this rate. So it, it has repercussions, not only within the country, but in the region. And, and I think these repercussions also impact the global economy. I, mean, I think you're insinuating about potential social unrest. Um, you know what's frustrating is the fact that when oil was at 100 or $110 a barrel, this was a real opportunity for, for governments, not just Nigeria, but governments around the world who rely on high oil prices, to, to really reform their economy to help reduce the level of um, inequality, especially on the income side. And it, it seems to me experts that I speak to say not enough has been done. Now oil is back down. And, and there has to be a level of frustration that this is even going to be harder to push through because the great excuse is going to be, well, oil prices are low and now we're not making as much money, so therefore we can't give back as much. Well, clearly the price of oil impacts what happens within the country, it impacts um, what the government is able to spend. Seventy to ninety percent, people estimate, of the government revenue comes from oil. You have had very few other sectors in the economy um, really developed. And so, so what is needed is to move away from, from a dependence on, on oil. Um, clearly, we have to pay attention to, to workers, to the environment, and to all of these kind of social costs of oil extraction. But we also have to understand that it's a finite resource. And, you know, so at an economy economy that is so solely dependent on that one resource is not sustainable in the long run. There needs to be development of other sectors, uh, particularly agriculture, but other sectors where you can have a diversified economy, um, technology, where, you know, again, Nigeria, like much of Africa, growing youth demographic um, that is, I think, the future, not only of the continent, but of the world. So unless that those young people have jobs, you will continue to have social unrest. You will continue to have instability in the country. So invest in the technology needed to give good jobs to young people, and you will see a new economy emerging that actually can meet the needs of not just the elite, the 1%, but, but the majority of people throughout Nigeria and throughout the region. For a lot of people around the world, when they think of Nigeria now, they think immediately of the first thing they think of is Boko Haram. You're an expert at this. H help us on the media side. You've seen the headlines, the same ones that I've seen. What has the media gotten right about Boko Haram, and what have they gotten wrong about it? Well, I think on the question of Boko Haram, the, the media has been too focused on sort of the sensationalist um, incidents. And, and I think, you know, it's easy to get distracted by that. But clearly at the root of the crisis is the economic inequality in Nigeria. Boko Haram started out really responding to the, the concerns of the majority of Nigerians about economic inequality, about graft, about corruption, about capital flight within the country. So, you know, I think we've got to understand that there can be no military solution to this crisis, that, um, in fact, dealing with the root causes of the concerns, the, the economic inequality, is really the only way to tackle and truly uh, uh, turn the tide against uh, a group like Boko Haram and, and, and a sort of internal domestic insurgency group like Boko Haram. Speaking of investment, one of the areas that has been talked about a lot over the past few years is China's involvement in Nigeria. They have made uh, big inroads, and not just because of energy, but also building some factories, manufacturing. I mean, there has been sort of a, a mini economy that's emerged specifically between Nigeria and China. Talk, talk a little bit about, from Nigeria's perspective, how do they view the Chinese? Well, I think China has come into not just Nigeria, but all of Africa as a source of, of funds for infrastructure development. And clearly, infrastructure development is sorely needed, particularly when you think about the northern part of Nigeria. Uh, the area where, where Boko Haram has been is an area that's been neglected in terms of economic development, in terms of infrastructure development. So building roads, schools, hospitals, um, this has been extraordinary in terms of creating an infrastructure that meets the needs of 
the of the majority of the people. It, it's it's problematic still um, in Nigeria, and and I think more is needed in terms of those areas. But but I think we have to um, understand that that some work has been done um, in in that area of infrastructure development.